This video covers the nanomaterials, in particularly synthesis of nanomaterials by a uh, sol gel method. Also, I'm going to a uh, brief introduction about the nanomaterial. Uh, watch the video, subscribe my video as well as like and share the video so that it can reach to the student community and help to the students. What is nanomaterial? The nanomaterials are a small sized materials. Consider a material with at least one external dimension. It should be less than 100 nanometer. Or in other words, the materials having size in the range of 1 to 100 nanometer with at least one dimension. So either length, width or height. So, at least one dimension material component should be there. Then that materials are comes under nanomaterial. Their size should be in nanoscale. That is a, between 1 to 100 nanometer and at least one dimension. Then this nanomaterial may exist in the tubes form, rod form or even fiber forms. In any of the forms they may be uh, exist and their physicochemical methods is entirely different from that of the bulk material. For example, gold nanoparticle with that of gold. It's entirely different. So, that nanoparticle, uh, the property is entirely different from the, uh, the materials like uh, uh, bulk materials. How we can, uh, we synthesize these nanoparticles? See, these nanoparticles are synthesized usually two approach by the two approaches. The one approach what we considered as top down approach and the second type of approach is a bottom up approach. See in the case of top down approach here that is the miniaturization of the components. That is a big component that is a bulk component that size is more than 100 nanometer or it may be in the form of meter is or centimeter is divided. It is a, uh, it is a uh, miniaturization of this component into a powder. Finally, it is made into a nanoscale uh, component. And uh, here usually uh, under a top-down approach, we follow a myelin process making a nanoparticle. Whereas in the case of other approach, called it as a bottom-up approach. In bottom-up approach, that involves the self-assembly of molecular component. That is a very tiny atoms are made into a cluster. Further, it is changed into a nanoscaled component. Approach six to have a smaller component, they arrange themselves into a more complex assemblies while top-down approach seeks to create nanoscale devices by using larger externally controlled ones to direct their assembly. In bottom-up approach, in bottom-up approach, the nano material is built by assembling it from a building block such as uh, atoms, molecules, etc. That is uh, atom by atom, molecule by molecule or cluster by cluster. Whereas in the case of top-down approach, the preparation is uh, started with the bulk material and is cut away to get a nanomaterial. The one bulk material is cut away into a nanomaterial. The important role in fabrication and processing of nanomaterial is when the structures fall into the nanometer scale. There is a little choice for top-down approaches as all the tools processed are too big to deal with such a tiny object. But bottom-up approach promises a better chance to obtain nanostructures while less defects, more homogeneous composition but among the two bottom up approach is considered as a better it is a promises a better chance to obtain a nanostructures with the lesser defects uh, defects observed in the case of bottom up approach is less more homogeneous and chemical composition whereas top down approach likely to introduce internal strife because we are taking bulk solution bulk component to a small in addition to surface defect also 
observe. The next is I'll take how we manage or how we synthesize the nanomaterial. The one method of synthesis of nanomaterial is the solid gel process. It's a very uh, uh, familiar process, solid gel process, the synthesis of nanomaterial by solid gel process. Is a possibility to produce a nanomaterial with novel predefined properties in a simple process and at relatively low um, process cost. The process, uh, process cost is uh, also very low. And it involves uh, several steps. The sol gel process can be characterized by a series of distinct steps. The first step is what we observed is a precursor. Okay, that is the preparation of precursor solution. Usually the precursor is can be an inorganic or most often a metal organic uh, precursors are used. Most uh, common organic precursor for the sol gel process are metal alkoxide. Precursor usually we may use a metal alkoxide where R stands for alkyl group. In a typical sol gel process, the precursor is subjected to a series of hydrolysis and polymerization reaction to form a uh, colloidal suspension called it as a sol. Metal alkoxide is dissolved in alcohol, then water is added under acidic condition or a neutral or a basic condition. Addition of water leads to hydrolysis which alkoxide ligand is replaced by a hydroxide ligand. See. First step is the preparation of sol. Here usually metal organic precursor like metal alkoxides is used. The metal alkoxide is dissolved in alcohol. Then N water is added under acidic, neutral or basic condition resulting in the formation of sol. Metal hydroxide or al alcohol sol is formed. MR, MOR is a metal alkoxide. It is dissolved in alcohol. Uh, alkoxide is dissolved in alcohol and then in water. And then it is acidified to get the metal alkoxide. And further, this sol is converted into this form, gel form. See, the bipolycondensation reaction between metal um, metal hydroxide with a metal alkoxide resulting in the formation of oxide or alcohol bridged, bridged gel network. That is MOR or HOM that is metal alkoxide interact forming a network or a gel uh, bridged network is formed or in other words a gel component is formed. See, sol is converted into gel that is by polycondensation reaction between a metal alkoxide with a metal hydroxide. Results in the formation of an oxide or alcohol bridged gel network. Further, this gel network is subjected to aging of process, aging of gel. The polycondensation reaction continues till the gel transforms into solid mass accompanied by the contraction of the gel network and expulsion of the solvent from gel pores. What we called it as Oswald ripening process and the phase transformation occurs from gel to the solid form of component is formed. And this process can usually takes for us around seven days, called it as a ripening process. Here after polycondensation reaction, a gel is formed. Gel consists of a solvent component, a gel network. And this solvent uh, from gel forces, the expulsion of this solvent takes place and phase transformation may occur. This process can exceed around seven days. Then, the, during this process, the drying of gel, a water and other volatile liquids are removed from the gel network. So resulting, you may get aerogel or zero gel. There are two types of gel you may get. The solid component, either aerogel or the other component, what we called it as a zero gel. If 
that is isolated by thermal evaporation then the resulting uh, product are xerogen right rapid drying process by thermal thermal evaporation then the resulting products are called as xerogen if the solvent extracted under supercritical or hypocritical condition then a uh, different methods then we get aerogel component see it is by surfactant of organic component or by the thermal evaporation method will get zero gel and if we conducted under a supercritical or a hypocritical condition if you remove the solvent then we'll get a aerogel component further this aerogel or a zero gel is subjected to dehydration process this is achieved by calcination and heated up to 800 degree celsius that gel is heated up to 800 degree celsius so that the surface bound moh in that the moh component is bound with that uh, gel component is removed they are stabilized gel against rehydration they, thereby they stabilizing the gel against rehydration that is subjected to a calcine uh, sorry dehydration process it is achieved by heating or by calcination and is heated up to 800 degrees celsius the surface bound moh groups are removed thereby stabilizing the gel against rehydration and finally it is uh, 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 subjected to densification process so calcination results in densification and decomposition of the gel uh, at temperature above 800 degrees celsius is observed the process of gel network are collapsed sorry the pores of gel networks are collapsed and the remaining organics are you know, volatilized so that we can get a powdered form of uh, uh, uh uh, nano material by heat treatment the material is shaped into desired form such as a film fibers nano sized powder and subsequently it can be converted into a ceramic material and even just by spinning also we can get spinning and dipping and then subjected to a calcination process heating at 800 degrees celsius we can get film coating of nano material or you can subject it one uh, uh, heating on soft calcinations we can get a powdered form or you can get a dense form of uh, ceramics so the uh, synthesis by solgel methods that involves uh, six step the first step is preparation of sol for that we'll take uh, metal organic uh, precursors like metal alkoxide is made to react with the alcohol or then water is added and the acidic condition we'll get a metal uh, 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 oxide metal hydroxides then formation of gel is polycondensation reaction between the metal alkoxide with the metal hydroxide resulting in an oxide or alcohol bridged gel network then aging process polycondensation reaction continues until the gel transforms into a solid mass accompanied by the contraction of gel network and expulsion of the solvent from the gel pores and phase transformation may occur this results uh this may take around 7 days then finally subjected to drying process water and other volatile liquids are removed from the gel network either by thermal evaporation process if it is removed by thermal evaporation process then we'll get a zero gel component if it is removed by supercritical or hypocritical condition then we'll get a aerogel this aerogel or xerogel is then subjected to calcination heated up to 800 degree celsius the surface bond moh groups are removed and thereby stabilizing then densification process is carried out at 800 degree celsius the pores of gel networks are gets collapsed and remaining organic species still volatilizes and we can get a ceramic uh, gel made ceramic uh, nano materials the other method the advantage of this uh, method is mono sized nanoparticles are produced by this method same sized particles are produced 
Com uh, here composition modification is easy. We can change one composition to another composition. Nanomaterials of high purity with good homogeneity can be obtained and sample can be prepared at low temperature. There is a, at, even at room temperature also, it's possible only for densification or calcination process. We have to heat that component. Various functional groups can be introduced. Coating deposition on large surface area. Substrate is possible, that is film coating and simple and inexpensive equipment is required. Controlling of growth of the particle is difficult and avoiding of accumulating of new newly formed particle is absurd. They may be joined to form a bigger particle. The other method of uh, synthesis of uh, nanoparticle is by precipitation process. It's a very simple method. The precipitation process, here we normally take a inorganic metal salts are taken, like that may be in the form of chloride, nitride, sulfate, zinc chlorides, like that type of compound, silver chloride are taken. First, it is dissolved in water. Then, metal cations in water exist in the form of metal hydrate species, like aluminum hydroxide. So, it's actually ALH2. O here 3 plus or even Fe uh, H2 3 plus. So this type of component exists. And these species usually get hydrolyzed by adding a base solutions like sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide. It is usually uh, uh, converted or it is uh, hydrated by adding a basic solution such as sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide. Then the precipitated hydrolyzed species, thereby on increasing the concentration of hydroxyl ion, the hydrolyzed species get condensed with each other to form either metal hydroxide or hydrous uh, metal oxide precipitate. That is usually it get precipitated. Chloride you may be observed like a simple method. So in the Confirmation state test of chloride, we normally take a chloride solution to that we introduce ammonium hydroxide. So it gets precipitated and that indicates or that precipitation um, uh, size, if it is too less, then it is a nano-sized particle. Metal oxide precipitation is uh, observed. Then usually this precipitated is then filtered, washed and dried. Then upon calculation of final crystalline materials of oxides are op uh, obtained. The method is relatively simple and it is widely used for the production of single or multi-component oxide nanopowders. Here it is normally used to synthesize like zinc oxide can be synthesized by this method. So solution E is combined with the solution B like uh, zinc sulfates or zinc chloride uh, that is combined with some a hydroxide will introduce some hydroxide then precipitation takes place then we'll keep it uh, for agitation for several hours nucleation and as a result growth of the nanoparticle is observed then filtrations repeated filtration then washed and finally it is dried and subjected to calcination process we'll get a zinc nanoparticles like see it's a very simple methods the method is very simple the process is relatively economically uh, relatively economical and simple wine ranger of single and multi component oxide nanopowder can be synthesized by this method and here the main disadvantage is just difficult to control the growth of the particles because it is at a, at a time the precipitation takes place and we have to give agitation. We have to uh, stir the uh, solution continuously to make it to a small particle. During the process, there may be a large, there may be inclusion of some large particle also observed. Difficult to control the growth of the particle and avoiding the uh, aggregation of nanoparticles. It is difficult to uh, avoid the aggregation of nanoparticles. <coughs> Thank you.